Uber started very much as a, an unambitious, simple idea. We have so many users in certain cities, so many riders, that two people are literally taking the same trip at the same time. It's sort of like, a, almost like a private, uh, a private bus type service, but on demand and hyper convenient, taking, picking you up exactly where you, want to, where you are and taking you directly to where you want to go. And so we have these really interesting visions for, well, when that gets really efficient, of course, what's happening is you're taking cars off the road. You're certainly taking cars out of parking lots, um, and you're making a huge difference in the city. And that's sort of the vision of where Uber wants to go, is to get such huge efficiencies that the price of getting around goes far below the cost of owning a car. And so my main message today is this, we want to make 2015 the year where, uh, where we establish a new partnership with EU cities, where we push for progressive regulations that ensure innovation and help build the smart cities of tomorrow, some of which I've outlined earlier, where we promote core city functions through partnerships on data and technology, and where we provide massive economic benefit to cities and their economies. We want to take 400,000 cars off of EU roads in 2015, and we want to bring Uberpool to more EU cities, reducing congestion and emissions. My driver told me that she can't make her living with the Uber drives, mm. so she just did a taxi license. In cities where we're not able to efficiently grow supply is where we get into a tricky situation um, in terms of making the system work, sort of what I would call exit velocity. Uh, it ends up resulting in what, what is known as surge pricing, it, <clears throat> raising prices, but then, of course, then fewer users want to use it. Everybody remembers, I think, the Sydney hostage taking and the fact that prices, Uber prices went up four times. And I'd like to know, what are you doing? Like, what measures are you taking yeah. so that things like that won't happen again? Our policy is clear on this, which is um, any state of emergency, any kind of just serious emergency of any kind, surge pricing gets turned off. It gets tricky when we don't know what's going on. Um, but you can build technology that starts to identify anomalies like this and turns it off right as it happens. I think most people who take Ubers feel far safer in them than in a taxi. If you had a problem with a taxi driver, he felt unsafe, who would you contact? The company, taxi driver company. Do you think they would answer the phone? Of course. So in most they cities, all, they yeah, all have I, a number I, in there. Yeah, you I, can identify them easily. Take a, pic, take a picture, call the company. So, the guy's out. So we're, you know, I, there there are certain taxi systems that might be high quality. I haven't run into <laughs> a lot of them. And what I think we've seen is that quite often complaints do come into taxi uh, into taxi systems, and they're not dealt with at all. Now, we can always be better, and we want to be better. Um, but I think the, the data bears out that we are the safest way to get around from point A to point B. But there's still a lot for us to do.